Hey guys, Short Stack Survival here, and today we're gonna talk about tourniquets. For those of you who don't know, tourniquets are strictly for the extremities, so arms and legs. You cannot tourniquet a neck or a torso. There's just no muscle mass and <laughs> it won't compress the muscles around the artery and restrict blood flow. So it's strictly for massive bleeding in the arteries that run through the arms and legs. This is probably the most common tourniquet that you'll find. A cat tourniquet, I believe this is a cat seven. Uh, the seven being the seventh generation of this cat tourniquet. You'll see you have a windlass here. So this plastic part, you have the time band and so if you keep a sharpie with your tourniquet you can write the time that you applied the tourniquet. Usually you want to have the tab out here that way you can get to the windlass. So sometimes these are hard to stage so basically you want to have the the softer side the non velcro side in one big loop and then you want to have that slick portion on itself and then you can come back on it and then fold it up. So that'll kind of keep it together but once you go to deploy it, you'll kind of give it a quick jostle and that'll rip it off like that. And then this part should come out pretty easily and now you have your loop that you can put around an arm and a leg. So if you had an uh, injury here that was squirting bright red blood and it is a massive amount of blood and you're like, oh my gosh, direct pressure isn't cutting it, it's still bleeding, that's absolutely when you'd want to use a tourniquet. And so if I was applying this tourniquet to myself, I'd go high, even though the injury might be right here, I'd go high on my arm, I'd pull it tight here, just keep cranking down and you want to get it tight, like uncomfortably tight. And then you grab the windlass and you start cranking and you go at least one and then you can check for a pulse. I have no pulse, so I have properly stopped the bleeding down to my arm. There's no blood flow through my arm. By putting this high and tight, I've stopped the blood flow. I shouldn't bleed out. And then when you're done, you can wrap this around the arm and then put this over and then write the time down. And that way the medical staff can know when this tourniquet was applied and do not take it off until you're in a facility that can properly take care of that person. It's perfectly acceptable to practice applying a tourniquet to yourself. <laughs> I can feel the blood coming back into my arm so it feels kind of tingly just like you slept on it. So don't be afraid to try that on yourself. You know, I wouldn't leave it on for a long time, but just getting in the practice of knowing, okay, how tight is tight enough to stop the blood flow to that extremity. This is the most common tourniquet nowadays. It's what most first responders have in their packs. So I definitely would get familiar with applying the cat tourniquet. So here's another tourniquet, the TX3. And what I really like about it is it's a ratcheting tourniquet and it's kind of made out of this seat belt material. If you needed to put it on your arm, you'd go high on the arm, just like we did with the cat tourniquet. Get it tightened down. And then what you do is you start ratcheting down. and it's gonna be very uncomfortable. No, oh, I still have blood flow. Very faint heartbeat, but uh, most of my blood flow is stopped. And then you just lift to open. Gosh, I couldn't get it. You lift and you push away to get that off there. It's freaking me out for a second, couldn't get it off. So I really like this one. I like that it's wider than the traditional cat tourniquet. You know, most people kind of know how the ratcheting system works. It also has a time stamp. These are two excellent options. This is an ankle medical kit. Depending on where I'm going, sometimes I'll carry this around my ankle. But I have a couple different types of tourniquets in here. This one here is a rat tourniquet. And uh, this is really handy for small children and even animals. So one of the issues you'll find with these 
larger tourniquets is that they can only close so tightly. So maybe the minimum space that it can close is like this big. And as you know, dog and children arms and legs are really, really small. It's just a smaller rubber band and you just kind of bring it back on itself several times and then you can sneak it in there. What I like about the Rad Tourniquet is it's very lightweight and it's versatile. And then this one is an H&H &H little tourniquet. I keep it in the plastic to keep it clean, but essentially, here, let me just open it up for you guys. So it's a very simple band. Just put it on the arm and then just kind of wrap it back on itself. Keep making it tighter and tighter. So this would be a good one for small children as well. So as a demonstration of how these tourniquets work, here, I'll, let's do the rat's tourniquet real quick. So imagine this is your arm or leg and here's the blood flow coming through here. And what you wanna do is just put this around. Imagine the white part is the muscle. And so you have this tourniquet and you're gonna tighten it, you know, as tight as you can and then bring it back in on itself and so it may not look like much happened here but just the idea of the compression you're smushing the artery closed with the tourniquet and compressing the muscle in and that stops the blood flow just remember it's going to be extremely uncomfortable for the person the tourniquet may hurt worse than the actual injury uh, because, you know, our bodies, we want blood flow to happen. And so that sensation of the pressure and the lack of blood flow is really unsettling. But just reassure the person. They'll probably be in shock. Just remind them, you know, it's a life-saving application that you have on their arm or their leg. And so you want to remind them not to remove it and uh, prevent them from doing so. Ultimately, you don't want to cause more harm than good, obviously. So just becoming a basic first aid train, I think is ideal. You wanna have that muscle memory because under pressure, you may forget how to apply a tourniquet. It's not rocket science, I know, but believe me, in a high stress situation, you may be surprised at how well you can function. And so some people do better under stress than others, that's natural, but I definitely think buying a $25 to $30 tourniquet is well worth it, especially if you go into remote locations like you go camping or hiking. If you enjoyed this content, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.